Now, one thing you have to keep in mind is that this formula uh, needs to, this is a probability. So you have to multiply this probability by uh, the number n, which you want to know, which you want to probe for uh, the, the quantities of uh, prime numbers. Uh, so you're going to have this fraction multiplied by a number n, and that'll give you the amount of prime numbers up to the number n. Now let's also talk about twin primes. Um, now you may have noticed that uh, twin primes usually look like this, or well, they'll always look like this. You're going to have uh, the one circle intersecting the numbers line and then plus two, one, two, also just the one circle intersecting the numbers line. So you have two prime numbers as close as possible um, as you can get. Uh, so twin primes are always of the, of the form p, which is this number here, and p plus two, which is p plus one plus two. In this case, you got uh, 20,441 and 20,443. And you can probably uh, check that online to see if uh, they're really prime numbers. Um, let's apply the same probability reasoning to uh, a twin prime location. What do we have here? Um, we have uh, twin primes, you know, uh, this uh, prime number plus two, it's another prime number. And what's going to happen is the uh, multiples of three can only happen in one location instead of two for uh, regular prime numbers. So it's going to be uh, three minus two is one possible location for twin primes. For the number five, which is this one here, we're going to have only one, two, and three possible locations that allow for twin primes to occur. That's for the number five. And for the number seven, we're going to have one, two, three, four, and five possible locations that allow for uh, twin primes to occur. For, number for the uh, number 11, we're going to have nine possible locations, and I'm not going to count them. So uh, you can probably tell that it's uh, the prime number we're using in the sieve minus two divided by the prime number itself is the probability that that prime number will allow for twin primes to occur in a certain range. So uh, same reasoning as before. Um, how do we write this in a mathematical formula? So I'm going back to my website here and uh, this is what we're doing. Um, we're taking uh, the prime number p minus 2 divided by the prime number itself and that's a probability and then we're taking the product of all those uh, probabilities together starting from p equals 3 to uh, you know infinitely high prime numbers now um, same as before I have a one-third here multiplying the product and there's a reason for that and uh, let me show you what it is all right, so we're uh, back here in the image, and um, we have one prime number here, where the vertical white line is, and another one here at plus two. So um, what's happening? Um, if you shift this whole scenario one unit to the right, it kills this prime number, and we don't want that. Um, if you shift this whole scenario one unit to the left, then it kills this prime number right there, and we don't want that either. If you shift it two units over to the left, for example, then you're back in square one. It's the same thing. And if you shift the two units to the right, then you're back in square one too, because uh, or in square one also, because uh, it's the same scenario we are looking at right now. So we have three defined points is this prime number, this non-prime, which is an even number, and this other prime number. So this scenario we're looking at here can only occur in one-third of the locations we've defined. So, you know, we got one location here, one here, and one here. And it can only happen here. 
or around this point. So we got to multiply the formula by one third right here. This product is multiplied one by one third to acquire the amount or the quantities of twin primes up to a certain number n. And the precision on this formula is uh, pretty uncanny. Um, up to 700 billion, we're also pretty close to, you know, about 9% overshoot uh, the amount of uh, actual twin prime numbers. Um, now, I'm going to talk about next the, uh, the reasons why these two formulas overshoot this one and this one here and it's got to do with uh, die rolls and uh, the amount of uh, dice you can throw but that are not allowed in a sieve alright now um, to prove there are, there are infinitely many twin primes I need one more tool and um, I discovered this type, this form of mathematics really on, on my own I didn't know it existed until um, somebody pointed it out to me uh, this is called uh, modular mathematics, and uh, I'm just going to explain um, basically uh, what this type of math is. Here we're back at the image um, for probabilities for twin primes, and uh, you can see here uh, I've located, I've called this point here 6K. Uh, I'll leave it up to you to figure out why. Uh, prime numbers uh, or at least you know twin primes are always of the form 6k minus 1 and 6k plus 1 uh, to do it all you have to do is um, draw a sieve with uh, circles of sizes 1 2 and 3 and it's gonna be self-evident now again we have uh, three points uh, defined uh, here 6k minus 1 6k and 6k plus 1 and all the locations where the circles can um, intersect the numbers line uh, around this point. Uh, we're showing here 6k minus 1. We don't have any circles here except the 1. Uh, 6k minus 2, we have a bunch of circles. And uh, 6k minus 3, and so on and so forth, up to 6k minus 9 here, because our largest prime number used is 11. The number 11 um, has always 11 possible locations where it can fall, but we only want 9 out of those 11 locations. So we have here one location, we can't have the 11 here. We have another here in the middle, 11 fall, can fall into this location. And we have another one here, we cannot have any circles fall into this uh, point. And we have here and then all the way back to here. So let's count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. See how the uh, 11 diameter circle ends here. There are no more of them. Any more circles will be redundant. We don't need them. Let's put this um, in an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, it'll be probably easier to visualize. And uh, I'm back in my website again. Um, let's look at this uh, chart here. The number 3 can only fall on this location, 6K, which is here. And you can see that's the, no, the size 3 circle. It can only fall on this location. This location kills a twin prime, and this location also kills a, a twin prime. This is a, a one more circle than we need, and it's redundant. Now, one thing we have to keep, keep in mind is uh, 6k minus 2 is the same thing as saying 6k plus 1 because minus 2 plus 3 equals positive 1. Now, I've also done the same thing here for the number 5, number 7, and number 11. We can see again that uh, 6k minus 1 will kill twin primes, and these two are allowed. 6k minus 4 kills twin primes because minus 4 plus 5 is 6k plus 1. 6k plus 1 falls right here, and we don't want that. Uh, same thing with uh, 7 and 11. 
what did I do next? Um, I grabbed this chart and I turned it into this. You are looking at clocks here. Um, you got the location 6K, which is in between twin primes. You got 6K minus 1 on here. That kills a twin prime. 6K minus 2. 6K minus 3. Minus 4. And minus 5, which is redundant because it's the same thing as 6K. I did the same thing for uh, the number 7. Uh, we got 6K. And 6K minus 1, minus 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And minus 7 is redundant because it's the same thing as 6K. Next, I did the same thing with the number 11. And you can see it here. All right, now to keep going, let's get rid of the 6K. And instead of 6K, we're just going to put K. And that is going to look like this. Where K is just going to be all the integers. Uh, from 1 to infinity. Now what I'm trying to see is how do multiples of 1 or how do the integers um, locate themselves in this clock around multiples of 5. To do that um, we start turning the hands of the clock. Here we're at 0. If uh, you move to the number 1 then you have to subtract 4 from 5 to get 1. Or add 1 to 0 to get 1. When you're at 2, you have to add 2 to 0 to get 2 or subtract 3 from 5 to get 2. And then you keep going all the way till you're back in square 1 here. When you're at the number 5, the integer 5 they fall into the same location. For the number 7, we do the same thing. And for the number 11, same thing also. And we gotta keep doing it for the number 13, the number 17, 19, 23, 29, and so on. For all prime numbers. So we're gonna have as many clocks as we have prime numbers in the sieve. Or prime numbers we're using to build the sieve. Now let's use this to check whether a number is prime or not. Uh, and let's use it as an example, the number 41. Um, the number 41 will fall in this clock in this location. Why? Because uh, multiple of 5 is 45 minus 4 is 41. Or another multiple of 5 is uh, 40 plus 1 is 41 also. Uh, where, does it, where does it fall on this clock? Well, it falls right here because 42 is a multiple of 7 and 42 minus 1 is 41. Or 35 is another multiple of 7 plus 6 is 41. So we got this hand of the clock, this hand of this clock, and then the number 11 is going to fall right here. Um, a multiple of uh, 11 is 44, minus 3 is 41. Or 33 is another multiple of 11, plus 8 is also 41. So we got these three hands, this one, this one, and this one. None of these hands fall onto here. If they all fell here, they would all indicate they fit onto that number. But since none of them are in this location, then we can say that 41 is a prime number. Another useful thing we can do is um, check for the multiples of these numbers. For example, um, if all the numbers fall in this location, then um, that suggests that uh, the number is the multiple of all these three numbers we have here, which would be 5 times 7 times 11, and that's uh, 385. So if at the number 385, you're in this hand of this clock, in this hand of this clock, and in this hand of this clock.